Hi, I'm Troy Schmidt with Geoprobe Systems, and today I'm going to show you the 20 CPT press. So we offer this press that uh, can attach to a skid loader. Uh, in this case, we're using a Kubota, but it takes a standard attachment and standard hydraulics. And so it's got the two hydraulic ports on the side that connect. It's got the skid plate that hooks up like a standard skid steer. And then you can use this as a, a CPT press for your cone penetration testing operation. Uh, some features on this rig that are really important to identify are hydraulic clamp. It's got an adjustment that you can open up the throat to allow a bigger rod to go through or a, a friction reducer. We have two cylinders to push and they're in line with the clamp so we have even and steady pushing. Self anchoring, soil anchors on either side. So what we do is we can operate a down movement and rotation and they operate simultaneously and we can anchor both sides one at a time and achieve our soil earth anchors that we need for the reaction. So being that this rig is lightweight, we have to use earth anchors to get enough reaction so that we can push the cone. So the rig is rated for 20 tons, so the clamp can hold and push 20 tons of force on a, on a uh, CPT cone. Uh, as you can see here, we have a corded CPT attached and it's in the clamp right now, held in place. We got a friction reducer to re reduce friction on the rod while we're pushing. And then the cone is at the very end. So we'll go ahead and advance that down into the ground. And at the bottom here, we have a second clamp feature, which is for holding rods. So we'll use that when we take rods out of the ground. We can use that clamp to hold the rods while we detach the top clamp and lower it to take another a uh, bite of the rod for pulling. And so many times when that happens, the rod wants to drop into the ground. So this lower clamp will hold it in place while we move the other clamp to get another position grab. On the side control panel here, we basically have all the controls for the rig. So we've got the anchors on the first set of four valves. We got the probe or the advancing cylinder for the ram right here on the far right. The two longer levers are for the clamps, so we leave them a little longer so that they're easier to identify as you're operating. So almost operators get to know those by position and by their length. So, so uh, one of them's for the lower clamp, one of them's for the upper clamp. The other uh, levers here are, two of them are used for the outriggers. So we have hydraulic outriggers. So basically when we set up, we can always use those to lower to a lower position if we're an une in uneven ground or if we have to raise up or level, we can use those and we can make movements right here uh, automatically. So when we first set up, we're of course not plumb or straight, so we have to make some leveling adjustments. So we do that by using the leveling jacks. We also have the far right valve, which is a folding valve. On this particular rig, it's an option. We added that in to tie into the bucket function of the rig. So of that Kubota we can fold it or the bucket movement in a sense. So by pushing that we can operate forward and backward for leveling. So this makes it pretty nice as it takes one movement at the controls. It, it takes it away from the machine and adds it to the controls so I can move so, uh, forward and backward and side to side with the leveling jacks. So I have a lot of feature right here in the front and all controlled by the, by the setup. Uh, on the control panel, we have a switch. Uh, it takes 12 volts, so we run 12 volts up to the unit. But with, with this function, it allows us to generate a CPT rate push. And as we're pushing, we then want to turn the other direction and go the other direction to get another bite on the next rod. Well, a lot of times we don't want to wait a long time for that head to go back up at a really slow rate. So we have what is standard on geoprobes as a regeneration, and so we can in that CPT mode and regeneration, we can push at a CPT rate down and a double speed going back up. So we can be really efficient in the field with taking the next rod and advancing it. So on top, we have our laptop. We normally can put some straps across to hold it in place so the wind doesn't blow it down. On the side is a cubby for putting our uh, CPT instrument. So that'll just fit in there. Cords will go to appropriate places. So one is for power data, depth, and the cone. 
And so that'll go in place and be held in place or secured by a couple latches. So this can be taken out at the end of the day. So if you're looking to remove electronics from the rig because of, of weather or because of security, you can just undo the connections and slide this box out and put it away. On the back side of the cylinder is the depth encoder. What we tend to use is a wire type depth encoder. So it's just got a mounting position in the back and a string that gets pulled up and is attached to the very top of the cylinder. And so that just comes in and goes out as we're tracking depth. The same goes for that. It's held on by a couple bolts. Uh, it's a weatherproof uh, data logging instrument, so it can stay there, but sometimes guys will take that off for security reasons and store it. So just in a few minutes, we can remove those items and store them. Generally, setup of this rig to go out and operate, we'll use the drop rack in front of us to contain all the rods. We have a general toolbox that can hold the cone parts. A lot of times we'll have our silicon oils and things in here and all of our spare parts for the cone. And we'll use a little simple bike vise to hold the cone in place while we prepare it. Uh, the rack is for holding rods. We'll hold 100 feet or a little bit more in this rack. And then it's meant to attach to the front of the skid loader, so or the front of the press. So a lot of times you're out and this setup has to make its way to whatever location you have. And so we have to have all these items in place. We have to be able to attach it and detach it. A lot of times a skid loader does not have a lot of accessory positions or places to put toolboxes. And so many times we have to have kind of everything on the front here. So I think the idea is, you know, if we have rods, rods strung up, extra tools, and we attach it to the front here, we should be able to drive out to a location, drop the rack, back up a little bit, and begin anchoring and setting up for a CPT push. And then when we're finished, we simply put everything away, we hop back in the skid loader, we drive forward, and we latch and hook up to this drop rack again, and it just stores right in the front as we take it on to the next location. So roughly this is a recap of the 20 CPT press made by Geoprobe. If you have any questions, you can call 1-800-GEOPROBE or look at our website for updates to get more information.